becoming a millionaire, a conscious millionaire, a new millionaire, a different type of millionaire, having a different relationship with money. This starts from the inside out. This starts from surrendering into this wave of light, which is taking place right now. Activating the conscious millionaire within you is not something that's chosen for some people and not for others. It's a choice that you get to make deeply within yourself. Activating the conscious millionaire within you is about being bold enough and brave enough to stand up and take a stand and say, you know what? I'm here for a reason, a big reason. And I'm going to choose to do things differently. Even if no one in my family has walked that path, even if everyone around me thinks I'm crazy, I'm here for more. Hi, my Belly fam. It's been too long. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wampa, for dropping in so deep with these guys. Beautiful king, shaman, leader you are. Thank you for being like that. Can you guys give Wampa some love if that session was amazing? <laughs> mm. I'm not going to tell my side of the story, but there were not 10 men. Let's just start there. <laughs> it was a smaller number. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the things that Wampa was diving into when I was sitting here, it really struck me. This one sentence he said, we are made of light. And it's interesting when we tune into that because there's a lot of craziness going on on the planet right now. I know over the last two years, many of you guys have felt the turbulence, the movement, the shifts. And it can seem a little bit potentially overwhelming and crazy at times. But when we zoom out and we look at everything from a higher perspective, maybe even from a cosmic perspective, we see that there's a huge transition going on. And our planet is literally being bombarded with these waves of light that are occurring faster and faster and faster as they hit the planet, plasma light to be specific. And it's interesting because as these waves of light come in here, it's recoding our planet. And she's ascending just as we are. She's growing and moving on her pathway just as we are. And I think one of the biggest mistakes as humans that we can make is to think that we're separate from that, separate from what's happening out there in the stars, separate from what's happening right here on our planet. And so as this planet is, is having these waves of light come in and she's shifting and, and shuffling and recalibrating, so are we from the inside out. We've seen more solar flares in the last two years than the last 10 years combined. Cosmic activity is at an all-time height and all of that is also going on within us right now. And for people that are really ready and willing and available and doing this work, there's a huge opportunity right now. If you don't get lost in the madness and all the craziness going on and instead really know that this huge wave is taking place, then this is the biggest opportunity for you to actually connect in and tap into even more of your greatness, even more of your true essence of who you are. This is your opportunity to embody more light, raise your vibrational frequency and surrender even deeper into why you're actually here on this planet. And over the past couple of years especially, I've seen this, this ripple, not just through the planet, but through humanity. I've seen people wake up. I've seen people that I know personally who weren't asking questions before now ask the questions. And specifically with me and my work, I've seen this wave and this influx of these powerful, conscious millionaires stepping into their light. And that really excites me because I know if we can get the resources into the hands and the hearts of the people that are really going to do good things with this planet, we're gonna leave this world a better place. You guys with me? Yeah, I think I'm definitely in the right room <laughs> for people like that. And so as we keep going into this, we start to remember that Becoming a millionaire, a conscious millionaire, a new millionaire, a different, a different type of millionaire, having a different relationship with money, this starts from the inside out. This starts from surrendering into this wave of light which is taking place right now. Because activating the conscious millionaire within you is not something that's chosen for some people and not for others. It's a choice that you get to make deeply within yourself. 
Activating the conscious millionaire within you is about being bold enough and brave enough to stand up and take a stand and say, you know what? I'm here for a reason, a big reason, and I'm going to choose to do things differently. Even if no one in my family has walked that path, even if everyone around me thinks I'm crazy, I'm here for more. Activating the conscious millionaire within you is about surrendering deeply, turning your consciousness inwards, and being raw and real and curious, as Wampa said, and looking at these parts of yourself that are aligned maybe with an old relationship with money, and instead recalibrating that and coming into playing with money in a new way. Activating the conscious millionaire within you is about surrendering deeper into service, into being more, so that you can give more, so that you can contribute more, so that you can actually lay out your legacy to change this planet. The old paradigm of millionaires where it was like, okay, I'm just going to make a lot of money to, for the sake of making a lot of money to have the things that I like, it's stale, it's outdated, it doesn't match with the vibration of the planet and where she's ascending right now. And what does match is service. What does match is heart. What does match is being bold enough and courageous enough to stand in your own light and make that choice from the inside out as you watch your 3D reality completely shift and recalibrate around you. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up some pieces on the slides today. And warning, they may look like affirmations, but they're not. Because affirmations are great, but if you just walk around affirming things and saying things over and over and over again, you can only get so far. These are not affirmations that we're going to go through today. These are portals into your own consciousness. These are gateways into unlocking pieces that are deep within you. These are portals that I wish someone gave me when I was starting out. And even when I was pretty far along in my journey with money, my relationship with money, when I was 24 years old, I manifested my first million dollars, and that wasn't the path that I was laid out to be on. Many of you know my story where I studied to be an architect, and I was following my family's path and trying to go to school and get good grades and work really hard and get a job, and you know the rest of the story. And I had a moment where I pulled myself out and made a conscious choice that I was going to figure out, why am I actually here, and how do I create a life that I actually love? And that spun me into a whole new reality, a whole new inquiry. Before I was 30, I had an eight-figure business, but something interesting happened at the age of 27. I had a deep shift within myself. Because when I was 24 with that first million, quite honestly, it was all about me. It was my goals, my visions, my life, everything I was focused on. And when I hit 27, I felt this interesting, empty feeling within myself. And from the outside looking in, you might say, well, Regan, you know, what's wrong with you? You should be happy. You should be grateful. What's going on? And I realized that the money that I generated and my relationship with abundance and wealth had nothing to do with me. And in fact, it had everything to do with the people that I was put here to help and touch and inspire. And that was the shift for me into recalibrating into a deeper level of purpose and following my own dharma and my own purpose and my own work of helping to activate this millionaire within you right now. So let's start diving into these pieces. Feel free to take photos of these, write them down. If you post on social media, tag me, tag Wampa, tag Vision, tag Mind Valley. We love seeing your breakthroughs and your takeaways. And we love just celebrating you guys when you have those aha moments. So I choose to be a conscious millionaire. When I first generated that first million dollars, and I was 24 years old, the way I did it coming into the online space where I knew nothing about online business, and I went and started this company online, and I scaled it from full startup, zero, to over a million dollars in less than eight months. And that generated some attention. <laughs> and I was on different media you know, podcasts and interviews, and people would always ask me, you know, Regan, what did that feel like? You must be so happy. You must be so proud. You must be so excited. What was that feeling? And it was interesting, because I had really had to unpack this in my own consciousness. Because when I go back into that place, I realized that that day, that moment, where my team texted me and would hit those numbers, I realized it felt quite normal. 
And then I thought, well, I can't tell the media that. I mean, oh, you know, it felt normal, even though it wasn't normal. It was a huge jump in my reality, a huge quantum shift. And I unpacked it, and I thought, why did that feel normal? And then I realized that I'd spent so many hours consciously choosing that reality over and over and over and over again, even when my current circumstances looked nothing like the reality that I was choosing. Even when I was over six figures in personal debt, I was choosing that reality. I was getting into the feeling of it, the vibration. I was being with it. I was allowing it to code through me and come out into the world so that when it actually happened in the 3D physical reality of my life, it was almost like, oh, yeah, this is what I've prayed for. This is what I've aligned to. This is what I've been going deeper into. This is the feeling that I've cultivated from the inside out for so many years, so many years, that when it showed up, it was like, huh, of course. And there was gratitude. And there was excitement. But I chose that over and over and over again. To many of you, if you're not where, you're, where you want to be with money right now, it's because you haven't precisely chosen where you want to be. So this is your invitation to ground into this, to get clear and specific with this, to get precise with this, to get into a place where you're choosing this every minute, every breath if you need to, noticing the moments where you pulled out of that and you're not choosing it. And then you come back and go, oh yeah, okay, coming back to the center, coming back to this place of conscious choice. You are consciously co-creating with money and money doesn't know how to show up for you unless you choose it. Yes? Yeah. So the next layer to this, I choose to raise my level of tolerance. There are two men out there, and they're exactly the same, and they have exactly the same business, and some sort of financial crisis hits both of their businesses, and overnight they both lose everything. And one man ends up homeless on the street, addicted to drugs and alcohol, and the other man doesn't, and he gets back up, and he rebuilds his reality, learns from it, and actually creates something even more powerful than what he had before. What's the difference? The difference is these two men, even though they looked exactly the same on the outside, had different minimum standards unconsciously. You see, we don't always get in life what we dream about, but we do get what we tolerate. We are living into our minimum standard right now. And if you're not sure what your minimum standard is with money, just take a look at your money. It's very simple. Look at your bank account, look at your savings account, look at your revenue, cash in, cash out, all of it. That is your minimum standard. So yes, we need a vision, we need a dream, we need precise goals, we need to choose that. And what if you focused on simply raising up your minimum? What if you focused instead on going, okay, I'm happy, I'm grateful for my relationship and my results with money in this way, and... I no longer tolerate that. And you don't have to be down and out to shift your level of tolerance. I work with clients where they're like, okay, I'm grateful, but I'm done with $10 million a year. I'm raising this up. I'm here for more. I'm here to serve more. I'm here to be the vessel to allocate more resources in the world. And we're shifting and raising that minimum standard. Again, it's a choice. And get curious with these pieces. Get curious around what this looks like and just know that if you're connecting to your bigger vision, your dream, your ideal reality with money in whatever way that looks like for you, please know that that's a whisper from your soul. That's a whisper from your soul because if it hadn't already happened at some point out in your future, you wouldn't want it. You wouldn't desire it. You wouldn't be excited by it. You wouldn't write it down in your journal as a goal. Someone else would tell you that goal, and you go, hmm, it's not for me. I'm not inspired by that. And I'm sure you have people where they tell you their goals, and you go, well, good for you, but that's, that's not for me. If there's a goal with money that's alive for you, that's lit up for you, that you're excited about, it's simply because it's happened in your future. Your job is to become the alchemist and shift your inner reality in order to bend time and space and pull that future reality into the now. And from that place... Magic starts to happen, but you've got to remember these desires, these dreams, these visions, they're your soul whispering to you. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you allowing yourself to spend time with your soul, spend time with your dreams and intentions and goals around money? 
in order to listen to those innate whispers that are coming up. We can only hold what we have the capacity to energetically hold in our field. We can only hold what we're willing to receive, consciously and unconsciously. Money needs containers in your life. I'm yet to meet a person who's become a millionaire or a multimillionaire who said, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really know how that happened and I don't know why and I don't have any reason for that money. Uh, it just, just sits there. I'm yet to meet that person. The conscious millionaires that I know, they're clear, they're specific, they're precise. They allow themselves to dream big and play big. They allow themselves to be utilized for a bigger purpose, a bigger mission, and they define those containers. So it's not enough just to say, okay, yeah, I would love to generate a million dollars. Why? For what purpose? If you had that tomorrow, where would that be allocated? Where would that go? What would those containers look like? I invite you to really play with this and have fun with this. Design those containers. And by the way, all of these pieces, these portals into your own consciousness work with any layer of money, small or greater than a million dollars, but play with them. Break it down and go, okay, if I really was to generate a million dollars and I had that in cash available to me, what would I do? Where would it go? I'd put this amount here and this amount here and this amount here. Mm, no, more, less, adjust it, play with it. And all of a sudden in our energetic field, we start creating the space to actually hold the energy, because money is energy, that is looking to come through our system. Some people don't have the containers or they have holes in the containers because they haven't clearly defined them. Now, it says this little formula on here, and this formula means self-worth plus millionaire consciousness equals accelerated receiving. Because as you're doing this, and as you're defining these containers, you truly have to recalibrate your system to know deep down that you're deserving and worthy of those containers. I see people unbalanced with this. They're, they're either really good on the self-love piece and they feel they're really awesome and, and they're working on their self-worth, but they disconnect and they're not focused on their millionaire consciousness and all the other pieces we're talking about today. And then there's people vice versa. Have a look at this formula for you right now and look at where are the pieces to activate. Is it that you get to go deeper into recalibrating your belief system? I choose to believe that I am a conscious millionaire. I choose to believe that I'm worthy, deserving, and responsible enough in order to receive the resources to allocate them in a grand way on this planet to really make a difference, to fulfill my purpose. And you craft this from the inside out. And when you first write this down, I remember when I first started doing this, I'd write it and it was all pretty in my journal and I'd be like, yeah, I don't really believe any of that. I choose to believe, I choose to believe. It doesn't feel true, but I kept going. I kept going, I kept recalibrating it. I would do it every single day until you get to a place where you write it out and there's a deep knowingness that's activated. Until you get to a place where you no longer write it out because it's just who you are. Because you've defined it and created it and allowed it to come through you from the inside out. You don't sit there and write, I choose to believe the sky is blue. I choose to believe, you're like, the sky is blue. I wouldn't even write that down. You'll get to that point with money. You'll get to that point with dropping deeply into your connection where you believe you're so deserving and worthy that no other option is even available to you. Yes, yes? Yeah. I clear and release anything that is stopping me. If you have a dream, a desire, a goal, a vision with money, and it hasn't shown up right now, there are simply some pieces within your own consciousness that are stopping it, blocking it, or slowing it down. Your job is to go in and have an inner exploration, an inner inquiry around what this really looks like around what are these pieces. So you can journal on this, you can meditate on this, you can ask yourself, what is currently stopping me, blocking me, or slowing me down? When it comes to tapping into the full and complete materialization, manifestation of the abundance. And you can do this with a very specific money amount as well. Now, as you go deeper into this, you're gonna be aware of fears, self-doubt, self-sabotage patterns, Allowing yourself to see also where you've been in a vibration of control. 
which is a vibration of contraction, because you can be in contraction or you can be in expansion, but you can't be in both. So you have to make a choice around that. And it's seeing these micro moments where your system contracts, where you think, oh no, there's not enough, I can't do that, oh no, and you notice. Who's had these, by the way, right? These little pieces of money, whereas you feel your system, what would abundance do? What would abundance do? What would abundance choose? What would abundance know? And last time I checked, abundance would know that there are infinite resources available at all times. But if your system is contracted, you can't receive them in your field. You also, in this inquiry, through this portal, want to take stock of your family systems. What stories were you told specifically around money? I know for me, I was told that money doesn't grow on trees. My dad always said, you know, oh yeah, you can have $5, but there's never any money in my wallet. I always had this programming that I had to really look at and undo, which brought up a lot for me. Because who am I to be the person in the family that breaks that generational curse with money? It's a big one. And many of you, because I know this Mind Valley tribe so well, many of you have this written in your life plan already to be the one in your family that's bold enough and brave enough and willing enough to actually go in and be the version of you that steps up and says, you know what, no more. You know what? I'm going to be the one that recalibrates this for my past generation, seven generations back, and all the future generations, by the way, seven generations down. Let me be the one that actually shifts and recalibrates this and creates this new relationship with money. I might grab the questions at the end if that's all right, because there's a lot to go through, but we're going to do a, a Q&A with both of us. <laughs> Thank you. All right, feeling good on this piece, guys? Going deeper into this, you also on here want to find your own alchemy to shift this and clear this. This is not about not having any self-doubts anymore. This is not about having any, not having any fears with money. This is not about being some robot that just has this perfect relationship with money. No, this is about being human with it. This is about seeing it even through your own conscious awareness and noticing these patterns, noticing these programs, noticing these vibrations, holding you back. That's 95% of the game. If you can take these pieces in your consciousness and bring them to the light and say, huh, now I see you, I choose to release that, no more. It's as simple as letting that go. And then of course you can find your alchemy, your quantum flow, your breath, your meditation, your journaling, whatever you like to support you in that process. But it gets to be simple and it gets to be easy. We've been told that making money is hard. We've been told that making over a million dollars is hard. It gets to be easy. It also gets to be fun. Yeah. I am a conscious millionaire now. I'm remembering a moment where I woke up and into a very lucid dream. And I was walking through this forest. And seemingly out of nowhere, because I thought I was alone in the dream, there was this huge golden being of light that appeared in front of me. And it startled me firstly in the dream and then I connected with this golden being of light and I noticed that it felt somewhat familiar, almost like a friend that I'd met before that I hadn't seen in a long time but I couldn't quite remember who it was. And so as I started connecting with this being, I asked them, who are you? And this being of light said, Regan, I'm you. I'm the version of you from your future that's come back to right now in order to support you with allocating these resources through you so that you can do bigger things in the world, so that you can do more good in the world. And I said, okay, well, you certainly don't look like me, but you feel familiar. And as I went into a deeper exploration and conversation, I realized that I had in front of me a version of me that had simply already walked my path that had already gone through all the challenges and unlocked all the pieces. This version of me was literally coded with all of the information desired and required in order for me to embody that version of me. All the belief systems, the programs, the frequency allocation in the body, all of these pieces were within this golden being of light. And it's interesting because there was a transmission in the dream and I woke up back into this reality, and I remember feeling different. And I remember also thinking, interesting, 
this higher version of me, the highest version that had showed up in that moment, I remember thinking, do I need to have another lucid dream in order to have this information show up? And the answer was no. This version of you is available to you at any given time. This version of you is one thought away. Just as we talked about earlier, your soul speaking to you through your dreams, through your visions, through your desires, it's the same. Your highest self that's already walked your path is available to you right now. So as you portal into this and you remember that I am a conscious millionaire right now, well, that version of you that's already living into that reality, what's that version of you like? And you start connecting, and again, you can do this through journaling or meditation in any way you like. You start connecting and, and you start downloading the pieces of information. How does this version of you talk? How does this version of you walk? The version of you that already has the resources and is a conscious millionaire out there on the planet right now, what's different about them versus you right now? How does this version of you show up? What kind of environments are they in? What does this version of you say yes to? What does this version of you boldly say no to? What does this version of you take a stand for in your family, in your life, in your relationships? How does this version of you move your body? What do you eat? How do you play? How do you serve? Have fun with it. Think of it almost like an interview. And you can connect right now with your highest version of you and simply create this dialogue. Simply allow this dialogue to code through you. And this is beyond the mind. This is not your mind trying to create and create something to put it in a box. No, this is an energetic conversation where if you start opening this portal, you will literally be coded at a cellular level with the information that you need in a way where it's not logical. And you won't notice it most likely until you look back and go, oh, wow, I felt using my intuition to go to that event. And then I met that person and then this happened. Oh, wow, I felt that was a clear yes. Oh, wow, I showed up kind of differently. Oh, wow, I walked or dressed or talked kind of differently. And you notice that in that embodiment of that, you have that version of yourself coding through you right now. But this takes work. This isn't something where it's like, okay, good, now you're all conscious millionaires, perfect, tick, next Mind Valley talk. This is an invitation into the work. This is an invitation to truly go deeper and allow yourself to surrender into these parts of you that are available to you right here, right now. And while we're on lucid dreams, <laughs> I'm remembering another, another dream that I woke up into once again. And this one was a little bit different. I, I wasn't in a, a forest. I was definitely somewhere in a city. It felt a little bit like New York. And I was walking up to the, the restaurant that I knew I had to go into. And the guy outside the restaurant greeted me. He said, hi, Regan, welcome. I said, hi. He said, your date's inside. I said, sorry? And I noticed that in the dream, I was unaware that I was on a date. So, okay, I said, who is it? And he goes, the, the one you've been dating a lot. You come here often. I said, oh, okay. And so I walked inside, and I sat down at the table. And within about 30 seconds, this huge golden ball appeared in the seat in front of me. And I was like, well could have been a human date. It might have been a little bit more fun, but hi. <laughs> and I start connecting with this huge golden ball. And the first thing that this golden ball says is, I feel so let down by you. I said, um, hi, hi, sorry. I mean, excuse me. What? And before I could finish, the golden ball said, I'm really sick of how you're ignoring me like that. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not ignoring you. I'm, I'm fully present. I'm here. I, I'm listening. I came to the date. And the golden ball says, yeah, but you're either ignoring me or you're putting all these demands on me. You want me to show up at this time and be this way and only come into your life in this way? And I said, I said well, hang on, hang on. I said, I'm a little lost here. Who are you? And the golden ball looked back at me and said, I'm money. And I said, what? Uh, sorry, your money? I'm, I'm dating money? <laughs> and, and the golden ball came back and said, yeah, we're all in a relationship with money. In fact, we're in a very intimate relationship together. And I don't like how you're showing up. <laughs> so this dream continued on and on. And as I came out of that dream, I realized that money is in a relationship with all of us right now. 
unless you live in some sort of cave and you've like totally exited out of any sort of financial system. And you can swap the word money out for crypto or anything you like. You're in a relationship with universal abundance. And if you're in an re intimate relationship with universal abundance, um, how's that going for you? If money was a human, how would they feel right now with how you're showing up? Because I know for me, I got to take a good, hard look at myself. And I got to see the demands that I was putting on money. I only wanted to show up in this way if I do these things. And if money didn't show up, I was angry and I was frustrated. And I was demanding things were different. And I realized that, hang on, if I'm in this intimate relationship with money, I mean, I'm not really spending any time with money. I mean, sometimes there could be weeks that go by where I don't even see money, say hi to money, acknowledge money. Money, when you tap into the core essence of it, and I don't mean the distorted version of the financial systems, the core essence is universal abundance, the most loving, giving, nurturing, powerful energy you ever tap into that just wants to show up for you, that just wants your dreams to come true, that just wants to help you, that just wants to support you in facilitating your purpose, but it's a co-creation. And you get to now, as you leave this room, start dating money and have fun with that. What does that get to look like in your day if you go on an intentional date with money? Maybe just 10 minutes in the morning. What would it look like if you created some sort of ritual of playing with money, exploring with money, getting up close and personal and comfy with money? Who's going to start doing a money date from now on? Yeah. And again, play with this. Have fun with this. When I started doing this, this changed everything, because money is one of the biggest reflectors back to you for you to see what's actually going on in your own consciousness. And if you don't like what's happening in the 3D with money, well, then there's some things to look at within yourself in order to recalibrate and upgrade to a higher frequency. I use environment as an intentional tool to accelerate my wealth. You guys probably know that Overall, you're the, fun, uh, the, sun, the sum <laughs> of the five people that you spend the most time with. And I believe that's true in all fronts, with your health, with your energy, your vibration, all of it. But it's also true financially. I remember when I was living in New Zealand and I had a partner at the time and this was a place where I was, my, my 3D, I had basically zero results with money. I was massively in debt, but I was going into it so deeply. I was starting to date money in the mornings. I was recalibrating my reality. I was getting up close and personal. I was doing a lot of different courses and working with people to help really rediscover my relationship with money from the inside out. And he used to tease me a lot. He would come in and literally say things like, oh, how's it going, babe? Are you a millionaire yet? And I remember how hard it was to thrive in that environment with someone constantly pushing my light down, making fun of that light. Why? Because it was bringing up insecurities for him, right? And so even though these conversations around environment can be uncomfortable, sometimes they're the people that are closest to you that you get to have a really hard, good look at. This is everything. So the first step on this is to take stock of your environment. Have a look at what's actually going on. Is your environment powerful, supportive, amazing? Do all of the people believe in you and your dreams? Do they want you to succeed? Do they want you to fly and be that conscious millionaire or multimillionaire? And if the answer is no, that's okay, but it's time for a clean out. It's time to take back your sovereign nature with your environment and go, okay, I no longer tolerate that. I'm not available to that. I'm not going to hang out with that person every weekend. And if this is a family member, maybe it's being around them, but energetically protecting yourself so you're not influenced by what they say constantly. I remember looking at this and going so deep on my environment and almost every single person I had around me in the beginning didn't believe in me didn't think I was ever going to manifest any of my dreams or visions. And so I started the clean out and it involved moving country to really reset my environment. And uh, I didn't move very far, I just went to Australia, it was like three hours away, but it was still a reset, I didn't know anybody. And I remember sitting there after I cleaned out this environment and there was just me left. And then all the stories started coming. 
it's lonely at the top. No one else is ever going to understand you. And I started catching these pieces, in which case I drew a line in the sand and said, no, I'm not available for this. And that's when I realized it wasn't just about taking stock and cleaning out your environment. It's then about consciously, intentionally creating those environments, doing things like you're doing right now and coming to events like this, surrounding yourself with people that celebrate your light, that get it, that want you to fly, right? And so make sure you go home and do this and look at this and go, okay, where's my environment at specifically through the frame of money? What gets to clean out and clear? And then how do I get to consciously call in the environments that support me and that nourish me? I am an energetic match for multiple millions. If you haven't got this by now, generating millions of dollars or multiple millions of dollars, it's a state. It's a vibe. It's a frequency. Your vibe attracts your tribe, but also attracts your money, right? And what's interesting is that if you can become an energetic match for the money that you're looking to call in with ease and grace, then you become a match with the morphogenic field of people who have done it before. Because I can probably guarantee that any money goal you have right now, there's someone else who's done it currently. You can tap into that across time and space. And one of the ways I love to do this is I set an alarm, a manifestation alarm, and have this alarm go off as often as you can, ideally once every hour. Obviously, if you have calls or things, don't set it during that, but whenever you can. And make it a nice alarm, by the way, not like brah, 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 like a good alarm, happy alarm, okay? And when that alarm goes off, all I want you to do is to stop. Stop, close your eyes, and tap into the feeling of already having received that money. The alarm goes off, you stop. You tap into the feeling of having already received that money. And you keep going and you keep doing this. The alarm goes off a week later and you stop, you close your eyes, and you tap into the frequency, the feeling, the state vibration of already receiving that money. And then something interesting starts to happen. You start getting into a place where that alarm goes off and you start blurring the lines between your dreams and your reality and it kind of feels like it's already happened but you're not sure if it has and you have a, a blip of your consciousness because the, the, the time and space is merging. The time fields are dropping away and your system's recalibrating into that frequency. So what do you do? You keep going. You, the alarm goes off. You stop. You close your eyes. You feel what it feels like to have already received that money until you get to a place where that alarm goes off and you stop and you smile because you realize that it's already there. It's already shown up. It's already in your reality right now. And then you set a new alarm and you keep going and there's another layer, but you play with this, you have fun with this. But this is one of the easiest ways that I've helped people and myself recalibrate into receiving money with bliss, doing it from a place of ease and grace and flow instead of this old paradigm of hustle and having to work more and, and, and pushing from some place outside of you. This allows yourself to recalibrate from the inside out, tapping into a different state. My three brains are integrated, are in alignment, and are always supporting me. You might be like, Regan, what, what do you mean three brains? <laughs> we all have three brains within our system. And this is one of my big pieces when it comes to working with high-level people, like in my mastermind around money, many of them just have their one brain recalibrated, not the other two. So we have a mind brain. You're all fairly familiar with this. This is the brain that processes the logic. Yes, I think I would like to manifest a million dollars. It's coming through the mind brain. And then we have the heart brain, right? This is your alignment to source. This is where the information is filtered through, your alignment to source, God, the universe, whatever label you'd like to use. Years. This is filtering through here, and then we have our gut brain, your inner wisdom, your intuition, like Wampa was talking about, your connection to your soul. And if you don't have all three of those lined up and working together, we've got a problem. Because your mind's like, yes, I want to make this money, and your heart's like, I don't know, I have some concerns around that, and your, your gut brain is like, well, what if this happens? And your system is not recalibrated. Your system is not in alignment so this is very simple. Spend time with this. Ask yourself and check in to each of these brains. And it's as simple as this. Mind brain, how are you doing when we talk about this amount of money? What concerns do you have? And allow your mind brain to speak to you. 
And mind brain might be super happy. Mind brain might be really concerned about this. Check in with your heart brain. Heart brain, how are you doing? How does that feel? This amount of money, what comes up for you? You're going to be surprised with the, the detail of the answers that start coming up. Gut brain, how are you doing? How's this amount of money for you? What concerns do you have? And there's a much deeper process to this, but for now, if you just get into inquiry and start asking those questions and resolving each of these pieces, your system starts recalibrating into alignment. I choose to upgrade into a stabilized field of impact, embodying a balanced give and receive cycle. All right. So... There are many different layers of impact, as you can see up here on the screen. And one of the big pieces where I've seen people desire to manifest large amounts of money, and then they get stuck, and it doesn't flow, and it doesn't happen, is because they haven't balanced out these different layers of consciousness. So let's talk about them quickly. Firstly, we have survival. Survival is where your relationship with money is a survival frequency. And by the way, there's no good or bad on these. We're gonna talk about how to integrate them in a minute. Survival is where you're focused on paying your bills, making sure that you, you don't run over with your debt, you're, you're in a survival place of can I buy food, can I support myself, the family, we're in that vibe, okay. The next layer is freedom of self, where you've moved past survival and you have a little bit of abundance and you have the freedom to do what you desire in your life. You can do the things you wanna do, live the lifestyle you wanna live. You are operating at a freedom of self frequency. The next layer, contribution to inner community. This is where you start realizing, okay, there's not just me here, and I actually want to contribute in some way. I want to serve. I want to do good in the world. And you start utilizing your resources to help your inner community. This could look like um, your family. This could look like your friends, the people closest to you, right? And then we have your outer community. Think of this like your wider community, bigger tribes, even Mind Valley. Everyone here is a part of your family and your tribe, but that's your, that's your wider, your outer community. And then the last piece of this is your global community. This is where you're at a frequency and a layer of your own consciousness where you want to serve the world, where you really want to have a global impact, where you desire to lay down a legacy that ripples far beyond just yourself, just your family, just your wider community, your clients, and, and, and you really want to change this world. Now, I don't even have to ask, because I know it's Mind Valley. There's so many people in this room who desire to be in the global impact, the global community layer. And from what I've seen, you can't be at those places until you've integrated every single other layer, every single other layer when it comes to money. How many people do you know where they have this huge dream, this big vision, they want to change the world, they're really excited about it, but they're still in survival? They haven't sorted out their own relationship with money. They haven't sorted out the pieces that have them go, okay, good, I don't need to survive anymore. So I really got to look at this deeply 12, nearly 13 years ago when I was lying on my friend's couch in Melbourne, Australia, completely broke and broken. I had lost everything. I had $8.70 in my bank account and I got a really nice mirror in the face looking at my relationship with money. And I realized I had a choice. I had a choice to either go into the doom and gloom, but I connected with something greater than me. And as I did that, I remember connecting to this frequency of global impact, of global community, of global consciousness, thinking, yeah, this is me, I know. My soul knows this, I know I'm here to do something big. But I had to get raw and real with myself because I was in survival mode. I was borrowing money from a friend to pay for my food. So I couldn't even be thinking about playing at these layers until I'd gone into that next layer of integrating every single piece. So take this home and look at it. Get really raw and real with yourself and start going, okay, where am I at? Where am I 100% serving in this way? And which are the layers that get to be looked at, get to be explored, get to be upgraded? I embody the frequency of consciously manifesting millions. It's a state, it's a vibe, it's a frequency. It's not something you learn in your mind. It's an embodiment, a full and complete embodiment of the truth of who you are. Wampa said it so beautifully. You listen, you trust, and you act. Let's not forget about the act part. It's really important to take action. It's really important to ask yourself, okay, if I'm an embodied conscious millionaire right now, 
then what do I do? What do I say yes to? How do I choose to show up in this world? What does that actually look like? Success is created in the micro moments. Micro moments. Are you acting from a place of control and scarcity and not enoughness? Or are you choosing to act from this new paradigm of knowing that abundance is infinite and it's available to you at all times if you choose it from the inside out? Listen, trust, and take action. Okay, guys, well, you have my core portals into your consciousness, and it's really up to you right now what you do with this. But I know for me, this is really, these are the pieces that I wish someone had handed to me and said, go, play, explore, go deeper. You could spend months and months and months just on one of these, getting into precise refinement of what this looks like. Because activating the conscious millionaire within you is an inner game. It's about being bold enough and brave enough to really surrender into a state of knowing that you're here for more. Activating the conscious millionaire within you is about being one of the souls on the planet right now that puts their hand up and says, yes, I'm here. I'm open. I'm available. Please use me. Please guide me. Please have me be coded with the money and the resources that I desire to truly change this planet. Because what I know for sure, guys, is that we really need you. We really need you. If you look at everything which is going out and going on on the planet right now, we need people like you. We need the Mind Valley tribe to actually be brave enough to stand up and say, yeah, I'm here. I'm available. I'm willing, capable, and available to do this work, to say yes, to go deeper into this, to surrender to actually living from my soul to surrender, to truly operating from a new frequency of abundance, letting go of the past and the old stories, and realizing that has nothing to do with where I'm actually going. The world really needs you. And I'm super excited to celebrate all of you as you step even deeper into this journey. Bless you all in your big, beautiful lives. I love you.